This is me. I am Vincent. It was all my fault. Who are you? Please don't kill me. These games are fucking bad. Oh god, I don't want to do this! Bad. I'm sure you know what's up at this point, but regardless, welcome back to the Spook Man Corner. So today I'm talking about the spin-offs, and I'm just gonna go right in chronological order. So we're gonna start with the most infamous one of the series, this one. Now this one has quite the reputation, and for good reason, it's a piece of shit! Survivor, or Gun Survivor in Japan, was released sometime in 2000. This game was the first FPS of this series, and oh boy, it sucks balls. The controls are fucking awful. First off, why? Why can't I use the right thumbstick? This game came out seven years after Doom, but it still uses those controls. That's one thing I actually want to know, is why did only two PlayStation games that I'm aware of utilize the second analog stick? Ape Escape and some other alien game. Why not here where it so desperately needs it? Well, since apparently using the right thumbstick for useful shit instead of inventory, we're stuck with stiff and limited controls. Seriously, they didn't even include a quick turn. They have the fucking audacity not to give you a quick turn in a game with the slowest fucking looking speed. There's an autoplay button where you press it, and you just look at what you need from a room. Or the nearest door, or the nearest enemy, whatever. One thing that really pisses me off is whenever an enemy attacks your stupid face, you look directly at the source. This is the dumbest fucking idea. The run seems really slow. The main character is the biggest, clunkiest fucking looking thing, and you get caught on shit really easily. The character design is shit. Look how lazy that is. For a full 3D PS1 game, the environments look pretty good and are well textured. That being said, the areas are fucking tiny, which showcases these older games' use of loading door animation. Actually, if there's something that drives me fucking nuts about these games, it's just the abundance of door animations. The enemies look like shit. Since the game is full 3D, they really had to reduce the textures and polygons. The zombies look awful. These weird soldier fucks make tiger sounds when they die. What the Mr. X, for whatever reason he's here, looks like shit, the tyrant looks like a vampire from Soul Reaver, and looks like sh it just all looks like shit. The story is ridiculous, I'm actually not too sure about it overall, something about getting off the island with some lame attempt to connect shit together with the name drop of Leon. That's right, at the request of my friend Leon S. Kennedy. Something with Vincent being an asshole. Die Vincent! Art being the cool guy. Don't fuck with Art, man. He got them combat rolls. It's bad. The voice acting is some of the A worst spot. I've ever heard. Hmm. Thank you. You are a good boy, Lot. What? Vincent? It's me, your mother. My mother? No. This is me. I am Vincent. So this is where the city is controlled from. A murderer? What are you talking about? Answer me! Who did I kill? It's not even funny. It doesn't even cross into that spectrum of it's so bad it's good. It's just fucking terrible. The game offers a branching path system, which is fine. And if the game wasn't such a chore to play, I'd actually like to see the rest of the choices. I don't know, but don't worry. We can fly as long as we have fuel. This game, it's pretty bad. 
It just seems like such a shit attempt at a first person shooter. And I'm aware that Japan, you know, both had gun con support, but I don't think that would have helped much here. Now, I'll admit, I had been kinda harsh on the game, like, for a full 3D PS1 game, the environments are well textured. And I wouldn't say it's nearly as bad as other people have made it out to be, like, it's not broken, and it's not unplayable. I just wouldn't pay money for it unless you're a die-hard Resident Evil fan. Like, it just is such a shit attempt at such an awesome concept for the series. I'll get to that fucker later, but until then, we're moving on to Code Veronica. This game kind of lies in a weird spot for me, because I'm not really too sure how I completely feel about it overall. <sighs> anyway, Code Veronica was released right after Gun Survivor in 2000. This is the first game in the series that was released on something other than a Sony machine, winding up on the Dreamcast. There's only one other version, which is Code Veronica X, which adds more story involving Wesker. I think some change graphical effects, I'm not too sure. This time, full 3D backgrounds take place of free renders, but still uses mostly fixed camera angles. The controls here are fine for the most part, but there are some problems with them. I'm playing the HD version on the 360, which doesn't help with its shit excuse for a deep head. First off, they fucking switched the run and action buttons! Why would you do that? What, what do you accomplish by doing that? You feel like a big man now, don't you? I know it seems trivial, but the last four games have Square to Run and X for Action. It really fucks with you for a while. The run speed feels really slow. Like, it could technically be the same speed, but that doesn't help the fact that you feel as if you run slow as shit. Claire looks like she's just doing a light jog. Other than that, they're pretty standard. Something I really fucking like is there are times if you mash with all your might, you can actually knock a zombie off before you take damage. I know this seems pretty small, but it's so rewarding when you just knock some fuck off before he can deal damage to you. Much like a ghost poop. Don't get me wrong, it's not really easy and I can't do it every time, but when I do, whew, oh baby. Every game in this series should have had this. What's really strange is that Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica were being made simultaneously, but Code Veronica seems to be almost a step back in the series in some ways. Like, you still have to hit X to go up and down stairs. That's not a major problem, but why not keep the innovation? Now you can get stuck waiting for zombies to go up and down them. God, you slow fuck. There's no dodge either, which isn't inherently bad, but it could have really improved the game. There's no separate scenarios or branching choice thing, just vanilla, start to finish, no different endings, nothing. This really hurts the replay value in my opinion. There's an extra battle mode, but eh. The graphics are... strange. Like the face models look really good. The backgrounds look pretty good too, but a bit boring. The game overall though just has a really cartoon aesthetic to it. For me, it really kills a lot of the horror aspect. This leads to the enemy design. The zombies look super cartoonish. They're like gory in the cutest way. The bandersnatch is really awesome conceptually, but that really vibrant yellow just makes it too goofy. And the spiders and dogs? Well, the dogs are still looking now, but the spiders actually look fucking gross. For the fucking album, though, like, this overhyped piece of shit is just a fish. Oh no, this is real scary. Oh, 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 oh jeez. Also, this is one of two boss battles you can easily avoid. No fighting necessary. There is literally a Gravoid in here. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm serious, look at that. If that's not a Gravoid, then what is Kevin Bacon? Nosferatu is pretty cool. The Tyrant looks like beautiful Squidward. However, I find the Hunters really awesome looking here, and the poisonous ones really stand out. As I mentioned before, the boss fights fucking suck. Two of them you can just avoid completely with little to no damage. Three of them have instant deaths if you're not careful. And the last boss, these little fucking slugs are such a nuisance. This isn't really a boss fight, but it's fucking shitty. If you don't have two strong health items, this part is literally impossible. It's fucking stupid and cheap. Why couldn't they spare me the anger and just make this all one cutscene? One thing I did like was the part when fighting Nosferatu and Alexei where you can aim in first person. The aiming is stiff, but it mixes it up a bit. Something new. 
I think the biggest problem with the atmosphere is the art style. The cartoon look to it just really pulls me out of anything that might resemble an atmosphere. The next subject I want to talk about is the difficulty. One thing they changed was the knife. This thing is super fucking strong. Literally, zombies do not stand a chance against the knife. Slash at their legs, they fall on their stupid face, and then you just cut them seven more times and they're fucking dead. Now this is really cool, but they didn't balance it out. I still have a shit ton of ammo on top of this god tier knife. This game is just really easy, but then they do something to completely fuck you. If you pick up this rifle before being completely ready, there's no, are you sure you want to do this? It's yep, and the second half of the game begins. Even if you somehow knew that picking this up started the second half of the game, you still probably packed up a lot of your high-powered shit for the obvious upcoming boss fight. The game then switches over to Chris. If you're new to the game, this can really fuck you. For me, this didn't really affect anything. I mean, Chris also gets a god knife and anything else you left in the box is still there. So it's not like you lose everything, but still. One thing that's a bit overdone is the backtracking. For the first bit, it's fine, but the second half of the game is just retreading your steps through the same areas with slight changes, and it gets old. Like here, it doesn't personally bother me, it just doesn't feel too overbearing, but the amount of backtracking you do regardless is excessive. The puzzles in this game are pretty good though. Like this picture puzzle is hard as shit. You really have to pay close attention to the memo and the pictures themselves. This oil puzzle isn't insanely hard, but it does take some brain power to get through. Most of them put up a pretty good challenge, so no complaints here. The story, on the other hand, is pretty cool. It's nothing amazing, but I think it adds to the overall series. The story takes place very shortly after the end of 2. Claire is on the search to find her brother, Chris, and in Code Veronica X, the extra cutscenes add Wesker into the mix as well. So Claire gets captured, snooping around, and taken to this island prison. She escapes thanks to a bro, Rodrigo. Don't forget to save him, bring a that he must add dog. How kind of you. She later meets up with Steve, which causes the game to turn to shit. Uh, sorry about that little misunderstanding. But like, I everything surrounding Steve just sucks. I don't mind over-the-top shit, but Steve is not only gone over the top, he's leaking all over my counter and making a mess. And that's why I fucking hate him. So either Capcom thought that was an accurate portrayal of a 17-year-old, or there's some joke I'm missing about Steve. There are so many times where they try to set up really emotional moments, but Steve comes and fucks it all up. Father! That third click is too much. I seriously laughed so hard at this part. Like, I can't be mad at this point. The whole relationship between him and Claire is so forced and silly. Not that this hasn't happened before in the series. Ada! At least there, though, Leon is the biggest dick OG and Ada is cool. Claire is still awesome, but Steve and his voice, and he's just an emotional wreck. God, fuck it! No! Then people? Shut up! I don't want to talk about it! Ah! Anyway, back to the story. So after meeting Steve, you do some other shit. Wesker really beats the shit out of Claire, and this part's really fucking brutal. Damn, son! You then meet another annoyingly voiced character. Playground I have prepared just for you. Alfred. His family owns the island, he blames Claire for his failing and tries to kill her. During a lot of this shit, we learn of the Veronica virus. The father of Alfred and Alexia, Alexander, injects it into Alexia and puts her into cryogenic sleep. Wesker's main hand in all this is, of course, to get a sample of the Veronica virus. Alfred fails even harder and is killed by Steve of all people! He awakens Alexia at last and now she's out and about causing havoc. Chris finally comes to save Claire, only to find she's already escaped the island and gone to Antarctica. Island not long ago. While I can't say for certain, she was probably on one of them. So Chris dicks around on the island again and finally flies there and finds his sister. Ah, so touching. Alexia becomes a big mess of bugs and you fuck her up. 
Wesker shows up at the last second to cause some problems for Chris and manhandles him, then gets shit on. Chris and Claire both this is shit! I almost fucking forgot. Steve comes injected with the virus too, another touching moment and becomes monster. He fucking died, good. One thing I want to touch on really quick is Alfred. Sure, they picked, again, possibly the most annoying fucking voice. Welcome, Claire. But I really like the whole part about him being crazy as fuck aspect. Dressing as his sister, talking like her. If it were approached a bit differently, I felt as if it could have been really awesome. So Code Veronica isn't really great. But it's not really bad either, it just kind of floats in the middle of the spectrum. It controls fine, the story is there, and the graphics for their time were pretty damn good, especially for Dreamcast standards. On the reverse, Steve is such an annoying piece of shit. I'd say if you're a Resident Evil fan and you haven't played this, definitely pick up a copy. But if you're not, skipping it's not that big of a deal. So we delve into the next spin-off that only came out in Japan and Europe. And oh boy, it's fucking garbage. Gun Survivor 2! This game is pure shit. Like, at least the first one seems like a finished game, more or less. But this game just reeks of rushed out the door caches. It looks like shit. Everything about this just looks really rough. Nemesis, for whatever reason he's here, he gets loose. Oh. Oh, okay. He looks fucking goofy as ever. It controls like shit. This is the PS2. Why can't I fucking use the right thumbstick? Seriously, this is the second time they fucked it up. Use L2 and R2 to turn left and right respectively. It's just a first person shooter version of Code Veronica more or less. And the only reason I assume this game isn't nearly as talked about is because it never came out in the good old fashioned US of A. It really is an abomination. Well that game is garbage, unless there's some miraculous part I missed in the middle of the game. So the next spin-off we're gonna get to is Dead Aim. This is a weird over-the-shoulder first-person shooter hybrid. What about some guy? Mm, great! The game came out sometime in 2003 for the PS2. As mentioned before, it's a weird FPS over-the-shoulder hybrid. Which once again, on paper, sounds fine, but once again failed in execution. This game looks pretty meh. Not really good, not really bad. The main character looks like a weird effeminate manlet. Huh? It actually reminds me a lot of cold fear, oddly enough. You're on a ship, and it's kinda spooky. That being said, this game reminds me nothing of a Resident Evil game. It might as well have been... Cold fear today. Again, I still haven't played that much of this game, so I can't say too much about it. The controls, again, suck dick. Possibly the worst of the first-person spin-offs. I mean, you can finally use the right thumbstick, which is nice, but then you have this really shit way of aiming. So you press R1 to go into first-person mode, and then you use the right thumbstick to look left and right and up and down to move the crosshair. What the fuck? Who did this? Why in the fuck would you do that? There's no quick turn, coupled with the most massive turning arc. Oh. Oh, never mind. I stand corrected. There is a quick turn. Double fucking tapping back? And even the goddamn courtesy to tell me. Jesus Christ. On the plus side, it does have a creepy vibe to it. But a lot of the enemies you can run right past. There's also a female tyrant, which is actually really cool. But why does it talk, though? A scared little rat with an ugly, useless gun. So once again, unless this game gets really good halfway through, it still seems pretty bad. Moving on, Outbreak. This game came out after Dead Aim also in 03. I still have limited experience with this one as well, but this one actually seems really fucking awesome. The gist is you can control one character that has special attributes. You do objective based events commanding your two other teammates via right thumbstick commands. The game offers both 2D and 3D controls which is really awesome. You turn slow as shit though. The game starts off great. First mission, you're in a bar and fucking zombies are breaking in. Wait, is, is that, is that real life footage from Mr. Game? What? It's really overwhelming to try to figure out what to do at first. 
everything is in real time, so reading that playing manual is kind of a gamble. The tension is real. I found exchanging items between characters a bit clunky, but the overall controls are pretty good. There's also a virus meter, which is a cool addition. This is possibly the most interesting approach to an RE spin-off. The game seems super tactical, and playing this online seems like it'd be a blast. There was an expansion that came out later called Outbreak File 2, which I haven't played, but it just adds more maps and characters. This is by far the most promising and interesting spin-off there is. So moving on to the last one I'm talking about today, Dead Dink Sad Chronic. <laughs> Umbrella Chronicles was released in 2007 and was followed by Darkside Chronicles in 2009. Now unfortunately, I don't have a copy of the first one anymore, but they're very identical in terms of gameplay. Once again, Capcom attempts to make another first-person shooter. This time it's an on-rail shooter which is a bit disappointing. I remember when I first heard it announced, I got really hype about it. But then to learn it was an on-rail shooter kinda bummed me out. It's not devastating to the gameplay, but it would have been nice for it to be a standard FPS. In terms of control, it's exactly what you'd expect from an Unreal shooter on the Wii. You point the remote in the general and you pull the trigger. The games look great for the Wii though, but that's followed by a pretty inconsistent frame rate that tends to drop a lot. The best parts of these games is the redesigned monsters. They all look superb. The cutscenes look fucking amazing. Oh hey Claire, hey Bebezito looking good tonight. Also, why did they make Claire's face so ugly in Revelations 2? Can aging? What? Anyway, the first game is just a retelling of 0, 1, 3 and some other after event. Dark Side Chronicles is a retelling of Code Veronica and 2. It's really cool to see the areas of these games explored in such a fashion. So far, so good. The environments harbor hidden archive files which lends more story and shit, but that's cool I guess. Here's where shit turns sour. First off, in terms of control, the Wii seems like the perfect console of an on-rail shooter, but for whatever reason they thought it'd be so great to have this really obnoxious head shake. The head shake fucks me up so bad, Amy accurately is now a thing of the past. Like have they not played House of the Dead? Shit's smooth and stable. Adding this full realistic head shake was a fucking bad idea. Also in the Code Veronica segment, they tried to make Steve more likable, but still kept his really annoying idiosyncrasies. This next part isn't so much about the game specifically, but more about their creation. So Umbrella Chronicles comes out, and it's more or less a fun little shooter. Then they release Dark Side Chronicles. Again, the game is fine, but my main question is fucking why? The games aren't bad, but why didn't they use the money to make something better? Seriously, instead of a Resident Evil 2, 3, or Cold Veronica remake, we get this. This piss poor excuse for this, like, reimagining of the older games. Like, the games don't directly piss me off, but the fact that the money went towards them instead of something the fans have wanted for years just blows me away. It's like Chronicles 2 even plays off that by even including RE2. That was the main selling point. They spent time doing the 3D models of the entire second game. All areas have been redone. Why just not go the way of the fucking remake? What the fuck? You obviously know people want these games remade to some degree. So instead of making those, you give us this. Unless there's some master plan all along just to tease us, then sure, that's fine. But seeing as Capcom just remastered the remake to test the waters of survival horrors of viability, I highly doubt that. Seriously, Capcom, stop fucking me. Stop releasing all these fucking cash-ins. I'm waiting for them to re-release Resident Evil 4 again on this gen. Resident Evil 4 Ultimate HD Edition, now available on the PlayStation 4. Only $20. So I kind of got off on a tangent there, but whatever. So concluding the episode, most of the spin-offs are pretty bad. The only ones I can really recommend are Outbreak and Code Veronica, and even with Outbreak I haven't played it too much, so I can't say too much about it. And for Chronicles, they're fine, but that head bob really pisses me off. 
So check in next time when we get to this fucking masterpiece. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh!